but also here uh, it is my pleasure to welcome uh, Jihan uh, Ajijti, sorry for the pronunciation again, <laughs> and uh, who is working at uh, OCP. And uh, OCP is a well-known company in Morocco, as we all know, uh, uh, notably working in the fertilizer industry. And you will show us how a large corporation can contribute as well, how much you are committed to this as well, as you know now my question. <laughs> and so thank you, go ahead. Thanks. Good afternoon. My name is Jeanne Ejisti. I'm uh, 35 years old, born and raised in Marrakesh. So I hope you're enjoying your stay while, uh, while here in this beautiful city. Uh, I'm head of business development at OCP Africa. So OCP is a world leading phosphate fertilizer company based in Morocco, but operating uh, better, <laughs> but operating uh, throughout the world. So uh, personally, my background is very far from agriculture or fertilizer sector. I'm a business background. I used to work in a, a strategy consultancy firm for several years, uh, working for different um, clients across the world. But at some point, I, I really wanted to reconnect to my continent. So I took a leave, a long leave. And I went traveling in uh, East Africa, where I did some volunteer work. And this is where I really first encountered the effect of climate change on, on real people. Um, uh, in the orphanage, the, they had a farm, and every day at the end of the school, the kids, uh, we gathered and we, got, we went to fetch water. I used to do that as well when I was a kid uh, at my grandparents' uh, house, but uh, the river was generous. There was plenty of water. I was shocked when I went the first day to go and fetch water to realize that actually, uh, the river, what I thought was a river, was only one meter wide and uh, not even a meter deep. The water was brown. And it was because the dry season was too long. And it's getting more and more frequent uh, that uh, the rain season is short and the dry season is getting too long. So this is when I really decided to make a shift in my career. And this is what also pushed me to join OCP uh, in Morocco. It was mostly for the vision that we what the company have for Africa. So let me share a bit uh, more on, on that. Um, so yeah, let's start first with the setting this year and the situation. Let's imagine ourselves in Africa in 2030. If nothing is done to really change dramatically the way we consume and the way uh, we actually uh, address the climate situation, uh, we will be facing almost 100 million hectare of uh, land that will be um, and and used for, for agriculture. And this is because of urbanization, desertification, um, and, um, and also um, the, the, the water scarcity, scarcity, sorry, for so, so, so certain region. Also, we will have almost 200 million people living in really um, extreme poverty, suffering from water scarcity as well, which will lead obviously to important movement of population, almost 3.5 million a year of Africans will be moving, displaced from their home countries or their home cities because of the climate change or because of unrest in the, in the different countries. And also we will be considering that uh, um, Africa is uh, struggling to feed itself. Uh, or today already we import almost $35 billion of food, um, mostly from the US and, and Europe. And it's estimated with the growing population and the changing in the diets to uh, increase to almost $100 billion. This money is, can be used uh, for infrastructure, so it can be used for, uh, to build ports, for example, that are really lacking in, in the continent. But we can also try not to see this catastrophic kind of scenario. Uh, and we hope that we can see also a different Africa an Africa that is green, an Africa that is self-sufficient, an Africa that is, have, has a water, um, uh, natural resources management policies, that is connected and attractive for investments, and that has a growing economy. And this is, will be possible if we change a bit the way we view Africa. Um, and let me here share a bit uh, an example with you, especially the, in the context of the climate change. We have a growing population. We will be hitting almost 9 billion people in 2050. 
to feed those growing population, we will need to increase uh, our productivity in agriculture by almost uh, 77%. That cannot be used only by using um, extensive arable land. We also need to increase the way the yields. And Africa in particular has one of the among the lowest yields in the world. Almost, um, let's I'll give you an example for the fertilizer. The use, we talk in kilogram per, per hectare quantities that we're using, the world average is 130 kilograms a hectare. In Africa, on average, we are below 15 kilograms per hectare, leading at a very low yield that are barely um, sufficient to, uh, um, to self-sustain family in Africa. At OCP, we, will, we try to, to change a bit the narrative about Africa, not seen only as the cause of the problems, but also as a source of the solution. And let me also invite you and look at the map to, to review the, just the continent and the land that we have. Uh, Africa is as big as the United States, China, India, and Europe combined. Um, we don't usually have that, uh, that sense of the, how big is, is, is the continent. We do have a lot of fertile land. We have abundant water resources that are not well distributed, but we do have them. And we have, uh, more specifically, um, a labor force, a young and attractive uh, agriculture labor force that can help uh, um, Africa get into to feed itself. But we have a problem again. Um, one of the major um, sources of CO2 emissions is deforestation. Um, it's said that uh, deforestation around the globe accounts for almost 20% of the CO2 emissions around the world. But what is causing mostly deforestation? Um, it's partly, and especially here, I'll, I'll give you the case of, of Côte d'Ivoire. And just, I'll invite you to, to see the map. In the 1990s, the forests were almost covering all the, all the land, all the country. This is the image in 2000, and this is today. Today, we have almost 11% only of the land is covered by forest. And this is mostly due to the lack of modernization um, of agriculture. In cocoa a sector, for example, uh, the farmers, because they don't have the mean uh, necessary to buy fertilizer or to have a, a proper and um, uh, modernized way uh, of uh, agri agricultural practices, in when, the, when the soil are, are depleted and poor, they go and cut trees to benefit from the fertility of those really rich nutrient soils. And this is actually what really leads in deforestation here in Cote d'Ivoire. So let me, before going to that, share then the perspective of, of, of OCP as a fertilizer producer. Uh, we are promoting a balanced fertilization. Uh, Africa needs uh, to increase its yields to be able to feed the growing population in the context of the climate change. And to be able to do that, uh, we need to support the va agricultural value chain throughout the continent to be able to invest and modernize the agriculture. And this is, can be done in, in so many different ways. Um, myself and my role as OCP is in the, the business development. But the business development, the way we see, we see it, is really oriented towards the farmer in Africa. And we have launched uh, the really first farmers' initiatives where we started doing uh, awareness campaigns and uh, recommendation and decision, give it, providing farmers with decision tools that could all, uh, help them um, know and assess how to invest and where to invest and how much fertilizer do they need not to, not, not to um, over consume and not to um, not consume enough. There is a, a motto what we say is more with less. And the idea is really to be able to only give to the soil what is really needed. And since the beginning of the, of the Farmers Initiatives Program, uh, it was three years ago, and today, and we're very proud of that, we supported uh, almost 500,000 farmers uh, across the continent, trying to provide them with uh, innovation and technology and digital and, and, and uh, um, sorry, break the, 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 the distance that we can have that with them because of the remote uh, areas and uh, the lack of infrastructure. But OCP has also tried to start first with its own in, uh, industrial assets and turn into a new uh, ecological transition. 
we have launched a very ambitious program and actually now it's a dedicated executive direction within the company. It's uh, for a circular economy direction. And the idea is to be able to really um, lower our footprint, a carbon footprint, uh, by trying to um, work in a, in a closed system. First, for example, with the electricity, uh, we're very happy to have almost 70% of our energy is a clean energy within all our industrial assets. And let's say for Morocco, and especially in, we have one of the biggest uh, industrial complex uh, in the world. But also in terms of, <coughs> sorry, the consumption of water. We've tried to have uh, a, a closed system where we only use and recycle the water that we use in our uh, industrial systems. And we also try to um, uh, rehabilitate the mines uh, where we, we mine phosphates by replanting trees. Um, and a lot of other different activities and um, um, are launched to be able to support this ecological transition of the company. And last, um, we also try and, and know the importance of R&D and the importance of innovation. So OCP is really working very hard to build bridges between the research and the academia to transform the agriculture especially with the focus on, in Africa. We've launched a university, University Mohammed VI Polytechnic, that is based in Benguer, um, that is uh, also trying to uh, invest uh, resources for the research in areas that are not always covered. For example, how to um, um, do agriculture in a desertic climate, in a desertic, uh, how to grow specific seeds that will adapt to the, change, uh, the climate changes. But also we have a specific master that has been launched also to be able to support new uh, young coming generation. And lastly, again, on the digital, we have launched an incubator to support and, <coughs> sorry, and uh, to support um, startups. It's, uh, it's based at the university and the idea is to be able to <coughs> incubate um, startups that are oriented into the ACTEC and biotech. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> better. So to finish, let me just quote uh, a quote from Nelson Mandela to emphasize how it's important, especially in looking at the context uh, of the climate change. There are few better ways to show one's love for one's country and the well-being of one's nation than by working on the soil. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, th thank you uh, for the presentation of uh, the OCP uh, evolution to address climate change. But you told us at the beginning that uh, you left, took some sabbatical, came back because you wanted to do something uh, of, uh, with a purpose. With impact, yes. With impact. What have you personally achieved through this? Because I understand the industrial program. I'm not sure I see GN into this. No. So. Jihan is, as I said, is uh, in the um, in the farmers' initiatives programs. Um, OCP used to not work directly with the farmers. We are more B two B oriented company, and um, and it's actually what actually drives me to OCP is uh, is the the launch and the inception of a program that is oriented to smallholder farming, where we give them supports. We have mobile uh, laboratories that, that goes to the. <coughs> that goes to the remote areas and, uh, and provides free soil analysis to the farmers to be able to guide them on the quality and the health of their soils and how to better use um, fertilizer or in, in good agricultural practices, uh, training, and also the use of, uh, of digital tools to be able to help them in the assessment of the PNL of their farm, for example, just a basic thing. And there is another program called AgriBooster where we try to connect the farmers uh, with its ecosystem. And the idea is to be able to the risk for the farmer his investments. So we go and, and first <coughs> find an off-taker or aggregators and secure a market for the farmer so that when he invests in the, in the fertilizer or in any seeds, he's able to uh, sell, to secure the sale of his harvest. And thanks to that, we have a collateral and we go to the banks and with the banks, we are able to provide micro credits to the farmers so that he can pay for the loans. And the idea <coughs> is to support him <coughs> to move from um, 
um, self-sufficient uh, um, subsistence, sorry, agriculture to a more modernized and commercial agriculture. And again, from three years, uh, since we launched the program, we almost supported and helped, I hope, and had impact in the life of 500,000 farmers. And we oh, hope to, open. yes, yes. So yeah. I'm very proud, and I think the company is very proud as I well. I let you recover. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>